In this video, I'm going to show you how I was able to replicate the tab bar moving from the bottom of the screen to the side whenever the uh, device's orientation got changed. This is kind of a continuation of the tab bar video, which I will post on the top right. Um, I did have to make a few changes for this to work out nicely, though. First thing, if we go into the project settings, I did switch this to the default or the, the 720 by 720, which is what Godot documentation recommends for doing a project whenever you're trying to rotate between portrait and landscape. I used to have it set for the iPhone SE's size, but if you try to rotate it, the iPhone's screen changed drastically, and it was really hard to try to compensate for that. If you look at these two pictures, the one on the left is when it was set for the iPhone SE size, and as you can tell, the um, neither the X or the Y stays the same whenever it changes orientations. Whereas if, when it's on the 720, at least the X or the Y is at 720, and then the other side scales appropriately, but it's the same size for both orientations. So that way, whatever size buttons and whatnot you have set up, it scales correctly. Whereas with the other one, when I was testing this, it would be the normal size when it was portrait, but then super tiny when it was landscape because that size was changing so drastically. I mean, look, look, it's a 320 on the top and then 1229 on the bottom. Like, how do you account for that? <laughs> so it, it just, if you do it 720 by 720, it at least takes that factor out. Aside from that, uh, the window width override and height override, I changed those to 720 by 1440. To get those, you need to have advanced settings on. For the stretch, I have set to viewport and expand for the aspect. And then orientation, I have that for sensor, so it will rotate. Now, for an overview here, for the initial tab bar, the tab bar essentially is just a horizontal box. And I put some spacers in here that will expand to fill the gaps. So that way it fills the size of the screen. Then each button is a texture button with the icon and then a label and the touch area for the blue box there. That's how those are done. Then the panels are essentially what comes up whenever you tap on each one of these buttons. For the backgrounds, for instance, you got the grid container, and that's where you're seeing all those pictures, which I'll put a link to the video on how I did that as well. It dynamically changes based on the orientation. But since this is a square, where you start doesn't necessarily matter, but you want to have everything built in one way or the other. So in this case, I started with them on the bottom. So like whenever it's in the portrait, they'll be on the bottom. So the bottom tab bar, and then the vertical panel containers, and then a spacer just to try to push it up a little bit. I did have some uh, separation on here as well for 20. And then for the, the side tab bar, you have, you want to set these up and then give them the custom minimum size for what works for you and give it a good separation as well. And same with the horizontal tab bar or panel container. This is where the, the this original panels they'll migrate over to. One thing to, to keep in mind, whenever you're adding panels on top of other panels, like we kind of are in this case, you need to make sure your mouse filter is set to ignore. By default, it's on pass. And if we go back to the, uh, the app here, with this panel being on pass, I can't click these buttons anymore. If I go over here, I still can, but I can't click these anymore. If we switch this back to ignore, I can now click these. So you need to do that for any panels that you're overlapping the previous width. If I set that back to, apparently it's stopped by default <laughs> for a panel. So again, I can't click on that at all, but I can click over here still. So I'll just make sure you put this mouse filter to ignore. That way it will work. Now these are all within the margin container, which I have set up for a dynamic adjustments to account for safe areas on mobile devices. I'll have a video for that linked in the top right as well. Outside of that, I have this portrait tab background, which is just a black 
black background in my case. To um, change that, is by default the panels will come in like a, a slightly gray color. If you go to theme override style and choose style box flat, then for the color, just put whatever color you want. In this case, I just want with black. Did that for both the landscape and the tab background. So by default, this is going to be hidden, that we don't have the black bar there, but you want the custom minimum size to match whatever this is going to be. So that way, when it does become visible, when you rotate the device, it accounts for the same area. Okay, that's it for the node setup. If we go back to the scripts here, you want to make sure you have a reference to the margin container because we actually need to adjust for the safe area again or the whatever margin you have set up will be accounting for that. So this margin container is this one here. Now one thing you want to do here as well just to make it more convenient for your code, if you right click on it and go down to access as unique name, you'll then get that little percentage sign. Let's see how this one was initially the dollar. If I was to move that margin container around and try to run it, it wouldn't be able to find it anymore. But now that I have that reference, I can change that dollar to percent, and now it will work. Like, see these ones, if, if it's farther down the tree, you don't have all those brackets. So, just a little, little tip. You also want to make sure you have a vertical panel container and horizontal reference. So that would be these, these guys here. That's where all the panels for the tabs are going to end up. Then you need the tab, bottom tab bar and the side tab bars for reference for these guys. So then down here in the ready function, we're going to be calling that handle screen resize, which is down here. That way, if the user has the phone in the landscape or portrait when it first starts up, it will account for that and adjust accordingly. Another connection we need to make sure we include is this um, get viewport connect size changed. And again, it's going to call for that anytime the phone is changed orientation. Within the handle screen resize, we get the screen size, get viewport rect dot size, the screen size dot x, is greater than screen screen size dot y. It's in landscape and it's going to move the buttons to the side. If it's in portrait, it's going to move the button move the buttons to the bottom. Now, in the move buttons to the side, it's going to grab all the buttons that are within the bottom tab bar with the get children, which is essentially just going to make an array of the buttons. We can then iterate through that array of buttons. And for each button, it's going to remove it from the bottom tab bar with remove child and then add it to the side tab bar with add child. And we do essentially the same thing for the panels. So a vertical panel, we get the children of it, which will be panels. And then in that array, we can go through each panel and add and remove it to the appropriate horizontal or vertical. If you want to include the background, you can do this portrait tab background visible to false or true. And then we'll get to this in a second, the adjust tab background size. Then to move the buttons to the bottom, we essentially do the opposite of what we did up here. So from the side, we remove the children, add to the bottom. Same thing with the panels and flip the visible for the portrait background or landscape background. So then in the adjust tab background size, we check to see which OS name it is. And then we set the initial, or sorry, the size.x of the landscape tab to be the same as it was for the custom minimum size. Because down here, we actually add the left margin of the margin containers, theme constant margin left. So without this line, this would just keep adding to it every time the user changed their orientation. So it would just keep getting bigger, 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 bigger. But um, yeah, that's how you can adjust the tab bar across the bottom and move it to left. 
Now, if you want to move it to the right, all you need to do is essentially move, move this vertical bar to the right. So obviously the background is staying over there, but that's how you can decide if you want it on the left or right, just change the position of the this side tab bar H box. So that's essentially what this is, just a horizontal box that containing the panels and the, the buttons. But essentially that is how you can use the add and remove children functions based on the orientation of the device so that whenever the user changes, if you want to move the buttons, you can do that. Hopefully you found that helpful. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.